So I, I found this text uh, back in 2010. Uh, it's popular beliefs and superstitions from Utah. There's all these different uh, all these different superstitious beliefs broken down by different categories. Sayings after sneezing, legs, knees, and shins, uh, like uh, fishermen, watches, pur purses, ghost stories. What I realized is that like some of these would really make incredible sculptures. There's one in particular, which was the first work that I made, which is if you place fingernails in a door hinge, it's a way to bring great wealth to your household. This methodology that I was using was this thing called the pseudo extension. It's when somebody reenacts a legend or a myth and uh, a third party witnesses that reenaction, that reenaction or that performative gesture becomes a, a point of truth for, for the third party. Like if you watch the news during Halloween, you always hear like check your kids candy for drugs and razor blades and whatever. And that, that, that actually never happened until it was on the news. And so people heard that and then went out and, and, then, and then actually you know, created that scenario. Another would be like someone dressing up as Sasquatch and inciting a Sasquatch sighting and then a third party uh, witnessing that and believing that they actually saw the Yeti. If you look at Sasquatch sightings over time historically, there was one in the 20th century that, that really invoked a lot of those sightings and then, and then the number really spiked. The same with UFO sightings, another 20th century example and then after that people really started reenacting that and it really created this, these conspiracy theories. I'm interested in the formal qualities of these things as well and, and, and how, they, how they function in a sculptural way. I'm making art and thinking about that too. The pseudo-extensive work has continually led me into other interests as well. And one thing you see a lot in superstitious belief is well, what folklorists or anthropologists call it is uh, sympathetic magic. And sympathetic magic is when, when you produce something that, that's similar to the result that you want. To, to get great wealth is to have a full jar of pennies uh, in your kitchen all the time. And so if you think about the form of that, you'll always have money uh, in your bank account because this jar of pennies is also full. So in a way, this object and the, the, the physical nature of it and the materials in it will actually produce a like occurrence. This abracadabra, uh, it's a painting, but I'm also interested in it as a spell um, and in it functioning in a magical way as well as in a formal way. If you write this uh, spell out and then if you read it from top to bottom, if you're trying to get something to go away, then, then by the time you're done reading the spell, that thing will, will, will go away. And so in a way that's, I mean, it's about the ritual, but it's also the form of the text itself is, mim is mimicking what, what, what you're trying to, to get at. So this is another uh, pseudo extensive work. Uh, it's if you put a rusty nail through a lime, it's a way to ward off the evil eye. If you look at think about it anthropologically, it's uh, it's rooted in this in this idea that we're we have a fear of technology, and and so this this practice it comes from the advent of the Iron Age, because people started using rusty objects or iron. Uh, iron uh, to, to ward off evil uh, as talismans. And, and that's another thing about these, about superstitions is that the form always stays the same, but the meaning changes over time. A, a lot of these beliefs, there, there is no concept of, of good or evil. Are you religious? No.